So we're going to be looking at a bunch of expressions and finding a different way to be able to write them. The, the version that we have here is the distributed form where it's been simplified as far as possible until we're given a value for x or given an end result of what this is supposed to be equivalent to. We don't have that option, so we're just going to rewrite these in their factored form. And what that means is I look at the terms that are present, the number values, and I find what is the biggest number that I can divide out of both of those evenly. Well, 7 and 35 both have a common factor of 7. So I factor out a 7, which just means I divide out a 7, and then I put in parentheses what's left behind. So if I divide 7 out of 7x, I'm left with x. If I divide 7 out of 35, I'm left with positive 5. Same thing here. 2 and 18, what can I divide equally out of both of those? I can divide a 2. When I divide 2 out, I'm left with an x and a positive 9. 4 and, tw and negative 20 both have a common factor of 4, which leaves me with an x and a negative 5. Now in this one, you have a couple of options. You're, you're not going to be wrong either way, just one is more ideal than the other. So we have a negative on the first term, but the second term is not. In general, we want to leave our variables positive. So in order to keep, make the x be a positive, I have to factor out a negative 7. But I have to factor out a negative 7 from both terms. So when I take that 7 out, negative 7 out, I'm left with an x. But if I have a positive number divided by a negative number, I have to have a negative answer. So that when, if I distributed that negative 7 back in, negative 7 times negative 5 gives me the positive 35. Now if I wanted to, I could have just divided out a positive 7, but that would have left me with a negative x, which is generally frowned upon in algebra, because it can get really confusing when the value of that x is a negative. So that if you have a negative and a negative, you're actually switching the sign. It can get really confusing. But if you had left the negative on the x, then you could have had a positive 5. Again, both of them solve the same, but the first form is the most accurate or algebraically preferred form. Then because both of these are negatives, I can go ahead and divide out a negative 4, which leaves me with x, and a positive 5. Because I'd already did, divided out a negative, the terms left over were positive. And then... Here, I divide a 6 out, which leaves me with x, and negative 9. So that gives us the solutions to the factoring forms. We'll take a look at the distributing in just a second. Okay, so the distributive property is asking you to take whatever is outside the parentheses and multiply it by each term inside of it to have a simplified expression. So 3 times x, 3 times 2, 3 times x is 3x plus 2 is 6. 4 times y, 4 times negative 1, gives you 4y minus 4. x times x. Now this is not a 2x. When you have an x time an x, I can't simplify that because I don't have a value for x, but anytime you have a number being multiplied by itself, you can write it using exponential notation. So an x times an x means x squared, and an x times a 6 is just 6 times x's value. y times a y, y squared, y times a negative 8, negative 8y. Eight a times b, because it's not a repetition of the same value, you're not going to have an exponent. You just write them side by side, because a variable next to anything else is saying that those values are getting multiplied together. And an a times a 3, we write 3a. Again, the coefficient always goes before the variable. And then finally, I have a repeat of the x times an x. So I have to have 3x squared, and then times 3xy. Again, we just write them side by side. And then a 3x negative 1 time is negative 3x.